Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We do thank you for joining us for another Central Jersey Bible Institute Encouragement Series session. Uh, we do thank the Lord for opening up a door of utterance as he has for creating the opportunity that he has to allow us all to be able to come together and sit at his wonderful uh, table uh, filled with his delicacies that which he has uh, handpicked and desired for each and every one of us to be able to dine by. And I'm looking forward uh, praise the Lord to the meal this evening. Uh, we have with us uh, uh, the Lord's uh, man's servant in the person of uh, a good friend of ours, Elder Stephen Dokes, amen, uh, associate elder at the Refuge Temple Church in Burlington, North Carolina. And um, he's also the dean down there as well. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, he is a, a good man of God and uh, he's a wonderful teacher anointed by the Lord. Amen. And uh, again, as I said, no stranger to any of any of us. Uh, he's been here before. So I'm looking forward to uh, to sitting back and just uh, taking in uh, the message that the Lord has uh, inspired Elder Dokes uh, to uh, hand off to us this evening in the form of spiritual uh, loaves and spiritual fish. Amen. But before we turn the service over into his hands, let us do this right and go before the Lord and petition Amen, that he will bless us with his presence this evening. I invite everybody to pray with me. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we love and thank you. We ask, Lord, that you would look upon every last one of us, all of the participants on this call, those who are on their way, those who wanted to be here but couldn't, that you, Lord, would bless us so in your name, that you would find us to be a people, Lord God, who you can easily mold and shape and after the image and the likeness that you have envisioned for every last one of us, that we may all stand in the end to be vessels unto honor. Lord, please, Lord, continue to grow us up strong in you and, Lord God, resilient against evil. Lord, make us extremely, Lord God, uh, valiant uh, towards that which is good, Lord God, and a true enemy towards that which is not of you. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to have mercy upon us all, that you will bless us in our homes, our families, that you will make our homes harmonious for your spirit to move conducively in, that, Lord God, you may completely have the full reign of our persons inside and out. We ask, Lord, that you will make us all rapture ready. Bless us this evening with your words. Please, Lord, speak to us from up on high. And uh, Lord God, uh, place within our, the deep bowels of our person and the good ground of our person, uh, Lord God, the food that you have sent down in the form of your spiritual manner. We love and thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray. And again, Lord God, uh, keep the enemy from us that we may learn of you without distraction. Again, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen, everybody, and uh, giving honor unto the Lord who is the head of my life, and our lives, praise the Lord, and unto the uh, anointed pastor of the house, in the person of, amen, Elder John Betts, to his lovely wife, First Lady Lovia Betts, uh, to the mother of the house, Mother Ida Harrell, and on the behalf of the board of the Central Jersey Bible Institute, we say praise the Lord unto you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, without further ado, I now turn the service over to the hands of, amen, our brother uh, in the gospel. Uh, in the person of Elder Stephen Dokes, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I am so grateful to be with you all tonight. Um, forgive my tardiness. Sometimes weekdays just work like that, but I have been looking forward to this for quite some time. And I am thankful just to be in your presence once again. Um, to have fellowship with the saints of God as we seek to encourage one another. And we are commanded to do so, to encourage one another in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to give special honor to Pastor Betts and Lady Betts, along with Elder Bonet and Lady Bonet. Um, greetings from Refuge Temple. Church in Burlington, North Carolina, and Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute. Um, we've I've been here before, so you all know me, um, Elder Steve Dokes. I have been in the ministry for about 15 plus years now, and I am continuing to grow as a person and as a minister. And I believe I will be doing that until the Lord comes or he's done with me here on the earth. Amen. But um, so, so we all um, need to glean from one another. 
and share um, what the Lord has given us. And I first want to um, tell you that everybody um, in the body of Christ has a gift. Um, they have a gift that the Lord has placed in them um, for the edification of the body. Um, so I want you to be encouraged to find out what that gift is, um, develop in that gift, allow the Lord to use you in that gift and watch God move in your life. Amen. I want to give honor to Jesus Christ, um, who is the head of my life, and give honor to my pastor, Bishop Reginald Davis, and Lady Davis. Um, uh, I want to um, go ahead and start with the word of prayer, and then we'll go into the lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would use me to the fullest um, to share with your people um, what you have poured into me tonight. And as we um, look at the topic at hand, uh, Lord, we're just asking you to, uh, to give us revelation, um, to show us how important your name really is. Oh God, as we embark in this lesson, I just pray um, that your name would be magnified. May I be decreased, hide me behind the cross. I want to speak and teach only what you have given me to teach and to speak. Lord, bless your people tonight. Give them hearing ears to hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. Oh God, I pray you would crucify all flesh, um, that it will receive no glory, but that all glory will belong to you. Lord, manifest something great. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Okay, saints, I'm going to share with you um, by way of PowerPoint, as I get set up, I am so delighted um, to be selected by God to share with you tonight. And I guarantee you that I will allow the Lord to lead me. Okay, so the focus scripture tonight is going to be from the book of Acts, chapter number four verse 17 through 18. And although we're going to start out with those verses, there is a much broader expansion of that text um, that we will go into um, before we start to deal with the, the main subject today, which is what is it about that name? And the name that I am referring to is the name Jesus. You know, there's an attack on that name, and there always has been an attack on that name because that name has so much power, so much authority. And we're going to discuss more about the authority and the power of the name, amen, as we go along today. But I don't think any of us are strangers um, to what that name can do in your life and in the life of many. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So let's go in order. Okay, so those were my opening thoughts. Okay, so what is it about that name, Jesus? You know, for some people, that name brings joy. That name brings celebration. That name just does something in, in your spirit. I mean, you hear that name, Jesus, it just um, gets sweet to the, to the soul and to the spirit. Amen. But not everybody, not everybody feels the same way as we feel about that name. The name is under attack. Um, people would rather have you say anything or do anything. Um, besides referring to that name Jesus when you speak or teach. Amen. But, but it's not just about the name, but it's about the person who the name refers to. That is what brings joy to us. That's also what brings confrontation with those who don't feel the same way. Amen. Concerning Jesus Christ, our Lord. This name commands attention. It commands attention in heaven. 
It commands attention in the earth and it even commands attention in hell. There's no neutral ground when it comes to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, you're either for or against that great name. Amen, no other name in history has created such division and we're seeing it play out day by day. Um, where if you even mention the name of Jesus, um, you're thought about a certain way. Um, they'd rather have you say God or Father or any title or reference to God, but you bring that name up, that name Jesus, it brings an unease, it brings a conflict, it, it, it causes uh, people to be nervous and it even causes the devil to be nervous and it should oh hallelujah but we celebrate the day i'm not taking down the name i'm not taking down the name i don't care what happens i'm not i'm not, I'm not giving up the name of jesus amen because by that name we are saved okay so before i get into the text i also want to bring up this point um, that the name of Jesus, um, as great as his name is, um, his name can be abused. His name can be misused and misplaced. Look at two scriptures real quick in Luke chapter number 21, verse 8. It says, and he said, take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and draw the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. There's going to be many who come in Jesus' name saying that they are Christ. The audacity of somebody to do that, but the word of God holds true. This name has been abused in so many ways. And that may account for some of the disdain um, that society has placed on the name of Jesus. But it's about the person. It's about Jesus. It's about God manifest in the flesh, um, the one who was born of the Virgin Mary through the power of the Holy Spirit, the one who ministered uh, in Jerusalem and Galilee of Judea, the one who hung on the cross, the one who worked miracles and confirmed, amen, his deity with signs and wonders. The, net, the man, the man who rose from the dead, amen, with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Um, but um, sometimes people associate the name Jesus with the counterfeits, the people who deceived through that name Jesus. Another scripture, take heed lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ, and deceive many. And so there's a lot of deception. Um, there's a lot of name dropping when it comes to Jesus. You know, anybody who can articulate the name can say it, um, but that's not the same as using the name and, and, and walking in the name and being. Um, representing the name of Jesus Christ. And that's not the same thing, amen. When we talk about being or doing or representing something in his name, um, we're not just talking about, um, we're not just talking about the name Jesus, but we're talking about all that the name of Jesus signifies and represents the power, the majesty, the authority, amen, that comes through it. All right, so we'll go to the scripture. And we're going to, this is a simple outline um, of what we're going to deal with tonight. Um, we're going to explain the text, and then we're going to talk about why the name of Jesus is so significant. We'll have some discussion, and then We'll wrap up. Okay. 
Acts 4, 17 through 18. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. What do you say about that? Wow. You can teach, you can do works, you can worship, just not in that name, Jesus. Have you ever had somebody, and, and I know we're saved, but um, most of us haven't been saved all of our lives. Have you ever had somebody who you dislike so much that even the mention of their name brings a certain attitude? And the person could have a name like John, a common name um, that many people have in America, but somebody brings up that name and it automatically brings a hatred or a dislike or a discomfort or, or even causes some people to be dysfunctional. That's how much the Jewish structure in the early church disdain that name Jesus. But there's another reason that they didn't want them to speak or teach in the name Jesus. Because every time they did so, Jesus showed up. The works showed up, the manifestation showed up, people were being healed, folks was coming to the Lord daily, such as should be saved. This name had power. And they knew they couldn't stop the apostles unless they stopped them from obeying the commission of the Lord. And when Jesus said, in my name, you will cast out devils. In my name, you shall preach to the poor. In my name, you shall heal the sick. They even knew that if the apostles stopped teaching, preaching, walking in the name, that they would lose the power. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Let's go ahead and talk some more about the scripture because there's some background. And I'm just going to speak through it. Amen. Um, what we just read was a continuation of an event that took place in the earlier chapter of chapter four. And actually, it was it was in chapter. Yeah. Um, the apostles were going to the temple. Um, matter of fact, Peter and John, um, they were going to the temple for prayer. And there was a man who had been impotent um, for all of his life. Um, and he sat at a gate, a gate called the Beautiful Gate. They brought him daily um, to this gate so that he can ask for what the Bible calls an alms. An alms is simply a charitable donation given to the poor. Um, so when Peter and John walked by the man and their eyes fastened upon this unnamed man, um, he expected that he was going to receive something from them. What did he expect to receive? Well, no doubt, gold, a coin, some money. But when the apostles looked at him, Peter spoke up and said, silver, I don't have any. Gold, I don't have any. But such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible says immediately he received strength in his ankles and he rose and he began to walk into the temple. But this is the significant thing about this event. The man had never walked by all accounts. And you know, when people learn how to walk as a person, um, 
you begin to crawl as a, as a baby, then, um, you know, a baby will start to take some, uh, try to balance themselves and stand up. That takes some time. And then they start to figure out things and re start to receive enough strength to where, you know, they start waddling. But generally the baby falls down or something within a few steps. Um, and through trial and error and human development, the person learns how to walk. And as they grow in and develop physically, they get stronger and are able to walk further, faster, longer, and so on. This is a process that takes time. It usually takes a lot of different processes within the human body and mind to make this happen. But this man, just by being obedient to what Peter said, he bypassed the process and he got straight up, amen. And not only did he walk, he leaped. Oh, glory. That, that's the power of the name. That is the power of the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay, now, when the man came and the people gathered together, and I'm going to read from verse 11 of, it's chapter 3. I said chapter 4, but it's chapter 3. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this, or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness, we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead, wherein we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And then they go on to preach Christ. And this causes some confusion. <laughs> um, the Jews didn't like what uh, Peter um, preached concerning Christ. Um, so they had them arrested. Um, the temple had guards and they had a level of authority um, within the temple and the Jewish culture. Um, and they were determined um, to get rid of um, John and Peter. Um, but a teacher by the name of Gamaliel uh, spoke up and said, um, you know, if these men be of God, we don't want to be found fighting against God. He had enough sense to know that if this really wasn't of God, if this, there was nothing to this name, um, then it would soon vanish. And so they beat them. And this is quite amazing. When they beat them, um, they, they, they shouted for joy. Um, I, I don't know if everybody here has had some sort of beating before. Um, you know, I was disciplined as a youth, um, usually deserved it, um, but I don't remember feeling any kind of joy. Uh, but the apostles, um, joy came upon them um, because they were representing that name Jesus and they were suffering for the name of the Lord. And before I go further, um, I think we can take a valuable lesson from um, what Peter and John did. Um, first is that we have to be willing to go through for that name. 
Amen. We like to speak that name. We like to say that name. But are we willing to suffer for that name? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And then the second thing um, that we could learn from their experience is that if you hold fast um, to that name, the Lord will give you power to endure. Whatever you may, difficulties may arise in your life because you are representing, because you are speaking that name Jesus. You, you know, there's people who are denying the name um, because they don't want to deal with the backlash, especially in this social media area. Um, people want to steer clear of the name of Jesus. Amen. But if you hold fast that name, even if the gates of hell try to come against you. Um, God is going to make sure um, that he has you covered. All right, so after the beating, um, the apostles went back to um, the, the believers, um, the, the um, congregation, and reported the matter. Um, so they began to pray. Um, they began to pray so much until where they were at shook amen i don't know if i've ever i've never been at a prayer meeting where it started uh, an earthquake or a tremor amen that's some kind of prayer you know when somebody prays so much um, that um, the ground begins to shake and it says the holy spirit the holy ghost fell upon them and they were strengthened to do the work Amen. So that's sort of the synopsis of the text um, that I read. So now I would like to go into uh, some, some thoughts concerning um, the significance of this name and why his name is so important. So before I go into this portion, um, are there any thoughts, comments, questions um, that, that you may have? I, I want to open up the floor. And I'll do this from time to time. I'll just pause um, to, you know, make space for some engagement and some conversation. All right. So I don't hear any right now. I don't see anything in the chat. If you um, do have something um, to say in the chat, you can definitely do that. And I'll be watching out for the chat. Otherwise, um, I will pause from time to time and uh, give space. Okay, so why is this name so important? Well, we could probably go on and on um, answering that question. But here's a fact that I looked up. I just looked up in uh, my Bible app, how many times Jesus appears in the New Testament. On olivetree.com, um, it says from the King James Version of the Bible that Jesus appears 983 times in the New Testament. 983 times. Now, if Jesus is, and that name Jesus is not significant, why is it mentioned 983 times? food for thought. So the name Jesus, um, which we know in English, um, is also a translation um, from the Greek, um, eos, and that means um, the son of God. And but it's also from the Hebrew Yeshua, or Yeshua, um, which means the Lord delivers. Um, here's a scripture um, that is synonymous with um, the Hebrew meaning. And the Bible says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Okay, so let's dive into the importance of the name of Jesus. There are multiple reasons that the name of Jesus is important. And the name of Jesus 
should not be used lightly. It should not be used lightly. As a matter of fact, every time Jesus comes out of our mouth, it should have some intention behind it. It should have intention. It should have purpose. Even if it's to, just to give him thanks. You know, I, I've seen people react negatively, very nasty by saying Jesus. We have to give an account anytime we say that name, Jesus. So the name of Jesus should not be used lightly. It should not be used as a name drop. Um, I, I just drop in Jesus' name and, and I'm supposed to get noticed or get some preferential favor with people because I say Jesus. No, that's not the purpose of the name. That's not the purpose of the name. The purpose of the name, uh, there are many, um, but that's not one of them. Um, so let's talk about a few of the reasons um, that the name of Jesus is important and uh, what the name of Jesus does for us as the believer. Okay, well, the name of Jesus connects the believer with Christ. And additionally to that, believe it or not, it connects us with one another. You know, we're baptized into that name, Jesus. And through baptism, we're connected through that name, Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus brings us to mutual accountability. You know, when you take on that name, there is a level of accountability um, that you take on. But conversely, there is a level of accountability that the Lord takes upon himself concerning you. Hallelujah. There are certain things that the Lord is required, amen, when you take on his name um, to do in your life. And better yet, there's a certain place, there's a certain end that the Lord is accountable to bringing you to because of that name. That name connects us with Jesus Christ. Amen. I love the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is just so sweet. Amen. All right, so we're, saying, we're bringing those two points up, um, the relationship piece and the accountability piece. Um, once again, I wanna open it up. Uh, I was prepared to kind of speak through this and, and just talk to you, but I, I really like to discuss the, the Bible and these topics because um, there, there are things that we can glean and um, that we can share with one another that um, will be helpful to all. All right, so anybody got any thoughts? Anybody want to say anything concerning? Okay, okay. All right, well, the third thing that's important about the name Jesus is that the name of Jesus gives us authority, but also causes us to have to live under authority. So we are bound by the authority of the name of Jesus. Now, when I say this, it's not just the believer that's bound by the authority of Jesus Christ. It's also the unbeliever. Everything, everything is bound by the authority of Jesus. Amen. Doesn't mean everybody embraces that. It doesn't mean that everybody accepts that and walks in it. But Jesus has authority over all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. But the authority, the authority that we live under, amen, also gives us authority. It's interesting to me that we want authority. We want to be able 
to do things and to speak things and um, to pray in the authority of the Lord's name, but resist walking under the authority of his name. You know, we limit ourselves when we try to live through, uh, uh, we try to walk in the authority of the Lord, but we fail to be obedient. How can we speak to devils? How can we speak to diseases? How can we speak to situations and expect them to obey us when sometimes we find ourselves disobedient? I think I'm talking to somebody tonight. Amen. In order to live under the divine authority of Jesus Christ or to live in the divine authority of Jesus Christ, we have to walk in that same authority. Amen. Glory to God. And that's what gives us power um, over the things that God has ordained that we would have power over. It's in the name, but we have to be in the name. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, the next thing is that the name of Jesus gives credit um, to the source of our salvation and the mighty works of God. It also validates um, the preaching of the gospel. It validates the word of truth itself, that name Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, glory to God. Okay. All right. I want to make sure that I'm not disconnected. So somebody, please um, let me know. You can still hear me. I can hear you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. So I have some scriptures I would like to discuss um, going further into the points that I, I just introduced. Um, the name of Jesus brings us into relationship um, to God and with one another. Matthew 18 and 20 says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. If you really want to see something done, if you really just want the presence of God to come into a place, get two or three people um, who are gathered together in his name. Not just testifying of his name, but being in his name. Hallelujah. There am I in the midst of them. Oh, hallelujah. We look for the presence of God to show up in different things. And, and this is the thing about the presence of God. I think we have to understand um, God is omnipresent. So he is everywhere at once throughout time. But when we talk about the presence of God in the biblical sense, sometimes what it means is the magnitude of God's presence or the magnitude of his manifestation to people. The God, God is everywhere. There's nowhere where he can be hidden. There's nothing that's hidden from him, but that doesn't mean that his presence dwells there. But when you get two or three gathered together, you know, you don't have to have a packed out church for God to move the way that he wants to move. Just get a few folks in a living room. Get a couple of people in the car going to work and let them get happy and think about that name Jesus and have a request or a desire. God will show up right there. Amen. Another scripture, Acts chapter number 19 and five, it says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. So the name of the Lord is the method for baptism, or the method is being baptized in water. The way that they were commanding to be baptized was in the name of the Lord or the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or the name of the Lord Jesus. That's how they baptized in the early church. 
And there is nothing that has been given to us in scripture that says that that should be done away with. So the name gives power to the baptism. Now, why is this important? Because, you know, you have some scriptures that seem to conflict with this. Um, I don't have time to go into it, but in Matthew, he says, be baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. And that has been used as the formula for baptism by a large majority of Christendom since the Catholic Church, since the um, institution of the Catholic Church, maybe even before then. But the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit um, is, is Jesus Christ. If you look at um, Colossians, it, it says, in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are complete in him. So the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost is the Godhead, not the Trinity, but the Godhead. And if the Godhead is in Jesus, then that means Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead. And for that reason, that name, that name that's given is above every name. We're going to go to that scripture in a little while. Every name. Oh, hallelujah. How great that name, Jesus. The third scripture, um, dealing with this first um, point, says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Okay, so you're telling me um, that the name Jesus, being baptized into Jesus, brings forth resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. That name, that name, that name. Oh, I got I to go on. Okay, Jesus' name brings accountability to us in the church and to the world at large. And this point is the reason that I really, I know that the name of Jesus is fought against so much, the accountability piece. First Corinthians 5, verse 4 through 5. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of Jesus Christ. You know, you need to be careful as believers. We need to be careful that we don't fall into a place where the name has to be, um, the name has to be brought against us. The name has, look, look what Paul said, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So when he comes, he's coming in the name of the Lord. In other words, he's representing the Lord, um, but he's bearing his name. Amen. And when this assembly comes together, it's not going to be to, you know, prod or, or encourage or, or, or sympathize. No, it's going to be to deliver this person unto Satan. The name of the Lord has power um, to also curse somebody or bring them to a level of, um, you know, uh, of, uh, I can't think of the word, but the name of Jesus also can go against you if you're not careful. In this case, there was a young man who was having a sexual relationship with his father's wife. So I assume that means um, that this is his stepmother. Okay. Had an extramarital relationship with her um, and to someone who was sleeping with <laughs> his father. Th this happens. This happens. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes even among the body of Christ. And 
when they came together for this congregation, they delivered him to Satan in the name of the Lord. Now, this scripture and these types of scriptures can be abused um, because you have people cursing folks all the time um, with no authority, um, you know, cursing folks in the name of the Lord um, because they got on their nerves or they disagreed about even sometimes the simplest thing or they were jealous of, of that person. Um, the name um, is not up for abuse. If, if, if you abuse that name, you can also be found um, being judged by the Lord. Okay, but in this case, the name was being used um, as a way of bringing this young man to accountability. And it says that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an awful thing for somebody to end up in this situation, but sometimes it has to happen in order to save the soul. Okay, Colossians 3 and 17, it says, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Whatever you do, not just in church, not just among the saints, not just on Sunday, but whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I know this scripture convicts me often. Maybe I'm the only one, but this scripture convicts me often because there have been times where I had to sit back and say, um, would I want Jesus' name to be, uh, you know, associated with the attitude that I just had at work? Would I want Jesus' name to be attached to um, sometimes what we just call ha having a bad day, having a bad attitude, you know? And it's not like I go around all the time with a bad attitude. Most of the time I have a smile on my face and I'm trying um, to do my best um, in whatever I'm doing or whoever I'm speaking to. Um, I'm, I'm really looking to um, bring glory to his name. Um, but there has been occasions where I, I had to look back and say, you know what, I didn't really represent him well, and I didn't bring glory to, to that name. But Paul saying here that whatever you do, whether it's minor or great, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And it's not just about attitudes. It's not just about um, how we live our life or our walk, but it's also the um, the gifts and uh, the calling and, and the work that we do, even in the church, um, whatever you do, uh, no matter what your station is in the church, you should do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. So if you, um, or if you clean the bathroom, you should do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you are working with the usher board, you should do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you're in the pulpit, you should do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you are working with money, you should do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever you do, you should do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord wants to put his name on whatever you do. And we'll talk about this in one of the next slides, but you know, the, the name of the Lord is a way of the Lord's sealing or validating um, your works and what you do. Amen. So you want Jesus' name to be on whatever you're doing. Okay, the last scripture. Bear with me a second. Philippians 2, 10 through 11. We know this one very well. And it says that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow, all things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So no matter who accepts the name or who accepts him, there is going to be a point, a designated time in history where every knee should bow, every tongue will confess. Now, I decided about 26 
years ago or so that I was going to confess the Lord Jesus and give glory um, on this side of life. I, I was going to willingly confess the Lord Jesus, and I was going to willingly bow before him. Oh, glory to God. I, I wasn't going to wait until I was forced, or I wasn't going to wait until I had no other choice. Um, I, I decided that I want to surrender to him um, willingly and freely um, because I learned something about Jesus um, that caused me to want to surrender all. Amen. You know, there's a song um, that's often sung still is I surrender all. And, and, you know, that's something that there are a remnant of people who are going to surrender all. Um, there's a remnant of people who are going to bow down to him willingly in peace. Amen. Surrendering the heart to the Lord with a glad spirit. There, there's that number, hallelujah, glory to God, who are going to do that. But for the most part, um, there's going to be a mass number of people um, who are going to bow before him. They may not have wanted to bow before him in this life, but they will bow before him later. And not only are the people of this world going to bow, but the angels in the heavens are going to bow. The devils in hell are going to bow. Everything, everything is going to give an account to Jesus. Amen. So we need um, to take hold and hold fast that name. <laughs> uh, you know, this reminds me in Revelation, he says to one of the churches, he said, you have a little bit uh, going for you because you held fast that name. Oh, I, I may get it toward the end. I may read it at the end. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Of course, we know, or we ought to know, that the name brings power. The name brings power. I'm a witness that the name of Jesus brings power because I've been on both sides. I've, I've prayed, I've laid hands on folks and the Lord worked a miracle. Folks have laid hands on me. Folks have prayed for me. They spoke the name of Jesus, and I receive miracles, or I receive a breakthrough, or I just receive strength, or I just received a level of anointing um, that surpassed where I was at at that time. So the name of Jesus brings power. It brings unimaginable power. It brings power um, that can't even be fathomed within the human psyche. I believe it was Paul that said, now unto him who was able to do exceeding abundantly above all that were able to ask or think according to the power that worketh within you. Amen. So let's look at a couple of scriptures. Um, Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So these works are going to be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do I got somebody who wants to make a comment? Uh, I think somebody needs to go on mute. Okay. Thank you. All right. So devils cast out of people who are in bondage because of the name of Jesus. People are going to speak in new tongues because of the name of Jesus. People are going to be raised because of the name of Jesus. People are going to believe the gospel because of the name of Jesus. You can't disconnect the gospel from the name. You can't disconnect them. They are linked. Thank you, Lord. 
or another scripture, um, there are probably numerous scriptures um, that make this point, but it says, but Jesus said, forbid him not, for there is no man which should do a miracle in my name that I can lightly speak evil of me. Now, the context behind this is there was a man who the apostles didn't know um, who was working miracles and, and he was working the works of God who Jesus, for whatever reason, didn't disclose to them that he, um, this man was a, a disciple of his. But he said, if he does a miracle in my name, you can't speak evil of him. Or rather, that can speak evil of me. Amen. Okay, let's move forward. Number four, the name of Jesus validates the gospel and the works of the believer. Before I give you these two verses or these two scriptures, I would like to say something about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power unto salvation to them that believe. That's what Paul said. It's not the messenger um, that has power, but it's the gospel. It's the message that has the power um, to cause lost sinners, people who have enmity, sometimes deep-rooted enmity against God or total, utter blindness um, of the very existence of God to bring them to repentance unto salvation. It's the gospel, it's the message, but the message is directed toward one individual, and that is Jesus. That is where the power lies. And you know, people often talk about the works of the Lord and, and folks wanting to see miracles and thinking that because they see the miracle, that's going to be the thing that kind of makes the, the light switch come on in their spirit and decide to be saved. But really, the miracles, the works, follow the gospel. They validate the gospel, not the other way around. So if a person believes in or claims to work miracles, but the gospel message is not a piece of the ministry, then that is a false testimony. So somebody's lying, somebody's being deceived, or they're working um, by the power of Satan. The, the gospel is what saves. The gospel is what brings people um, to uh, a point of utter darkness unto the glorious light of Jesus Christ. And because of the message, um, the miracles take place. They validate. They validate. Uh, I, I want you to take notice of something um, in Acts, which we just read. When the miracle took place, the folks got excited about the miracle. But instead of glorying in the miracle, Peter began to preach the gospel concerning Jesus Christ. And it wasn't the goody goody stuff. It was a message that was so piercing, that pricked them so bad that it caused them to be arrested. It caused them to be arrested. Amen. Yes, miracles and signs, they can open the door. But the door that's opened is to preach the gospel. And it's not just to the folks who's going to take it well. It's to everybody. Because you don't know who is um, in the atmosphere who may believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, even though the masses don't believe. So. Let's look at the scriptures, Acts 8, 
verse 12, this is where Philip goes to um, Samaria and preaches the gospel. And the Bible says, but when they believe Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. So this is kind of a side note. The kingdom of God and the name of Jesus are tightly connected. And there's a lot that is said about the kingdom of God. But how can you speak about the kingdom of God or claim the kingdom of God when you leave the name of Jesus out? And it said, because he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There was no discrimination here. There was no discrimination. Anybody who wanted access to the kingdom of God was invited to come. Oh, thank you. Okay, the next scripture, Acts chapter three, verse 16. It says, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And what Peter is saying, you know this man and you know his situation. And it's by the name of Jesus that he has not just soundness, but perfect soundness. Okay, so in addition to um, the name bringing us to relationship with himself and with each other, and the name bringing us into accountability to God and vice versa, and bringing us into a level of power, walking in power and living in power and authority, and also validating the works of the Lord through the church and through his people. That name Jesus is exalted. It's a name. There are many names. There are many people who have names, but this name, this name goes above every name, every name that is named, hallelujah, above the celebrities, the athletic world, those in history who have done great achievements and their names are known among the masses, this name is above every name, hallelujah. Are there any thoughts or questions? I thought I saw somebody come off of mute. Okay, I think I'm almost done and then we'll talk. All right, so two scriptures, um, Philippians 2, verse nine through 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. I think I might've read that already. Every tongue shall confess. Uh, hold up a second. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. Ephesians 1 verse 19 through 21 says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, um, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in all heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. That name, Jesus, amen, how sweet it is. What is it about this name 
that is greater than any name? What is it about this name um, that causes us to love him so? Okay, so that, that's really what I have. Um, there's a few more things I could say, um, but that's really what I have for tonight. And I, I wanted to get some dialogue I'm going to look for that scripture in Revelation while I'm waiting. Amen. Because there is such, it, the name of Jesus is so sweet. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Please give me your thoughts. Wonderful lesson, sir. Wonderful lesson. Amen. If if you ever um, if, if you ever dealt with um, confrontation or people feeling some way about that name Jesus, have you ever had people question you why why are you you baptized in the name of Jesus? Um, Shouldn't you be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, of the, and the Holy Ghost? I mean, you, that name Jesus, um, it, it, it causes a, a lot of disturbance in, in the atmosphere. And I believe that um, the, the satanic world really uh, attacks those who attach themselves to that name. Amen. All right, well, I'll give you... Uh, scripture and revelation um, that I thought about earlier. Um, it is Revelation 2, verse 13. It says, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. Thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith. That name. Said you have a, there, there's a lot of things going on in Pergamos. There's a lot of persecution going on in Pergamos. Um, there are even some things going on in the church that aren't right at Pergamos, but you've held fast to my name. And I believe the Lord honors those who hold fast to his name. I, I really believe that there's a special place in his heart for those who hold fast to his name. What name again? the name of Jesus. We all bow and surrender to that name. There's a couple other things I'd like to say going back to the authority piece. Um, you know, um, the name of Jesus um, gives you a certain level of authority. And something that you could use to describe this as an analogy would be this. Um, there are certain things um, that uh, in order to do them or in order to have access to certain places, um, you have to have some credentials, a license, an ID. You, you have to have something like that um, that gives you authority um, to do something or to access something. Um, you know, there, there's even levels on the internet, or you you know you have to have an authorization level in, in order to see certain information, um, e either about a person or uh, about a company or whatever. Uh, um, so I look at that and the name of Jesus, and how the name of Jesus um, gives you that same sort of access or that same sort of um, authority um, to do certain things or to make certain things happen or to declare certain things that you would not be able to do if you did not bear that name Jesus or do the work or, or say or make the statement in his name. And I'm not talking about saying in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about actually doing whatever it is or saying whatever it is 
as a representative, as an ambassador, that's what he's talking about when he says, or the apostles were talking about when they would say in his name. They were representing Christ in the earth. And they were the emissary. Oh, hallelujah. They were the emissary um, sent out um, to preach the gospel, to work miracles, and um, to show people um, the loving grace of God through the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that will bring people to salvation from their sins and would, would cause them to escape the wrath that was to come. So when you speak in his name, when you say the name of Jesus, it carries so much weight. It carries so much weight. Uh, and I, I'm afraid um, that there's too many people who are saying the name of Jesus, but they're not representing Jesus. And when you're not representing Jesus, when you say in the name of Jesus, you're really saying it in vain. You're really saying it in vain because there is a purpose for the name. The purpose of the name is um, to represent him in the earth and to cause the things of heaven to be manifest in the earth. And by his name, through his name, we show forth the kingdom of God. That's what we do. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, if I don't have any thoughts or questions, I want to recap and I'll give it back over to our MC. Okay, so when we think about that name Jesus and the weight, the power, and the greatness of his name, it goes without comparison that his name has had a bigger impact than any other. The name represents so much. The name does so much. The name gives us so much. But the name also requires something of us. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. The significance of Jesus' name. Amen is worldwide and it goes throughout all the generations. Amen, thank you, Jesus. So much and so that the Bible tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It says he's been given a name that is above every name, above every single name. And we bear that name and we can call on the name of the Lord. We can come together in the name of the Lord. We can speak in the name of the Lord. And we can do the works of the Lord in his name. But we also need to recognize that even in our daily and somewhat mundane life, everyday life, um, that, that we also need to be doing and saying things in the name of the Lord. Everything should have a purpose, and that is to please him and to represent his name well. Uh, you know, there's a saying, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, hopefully, is that there is a saying that says, basically don't give me a bad name or um, you gave them a bad name. You don't want the name of the Lord to be spoken of evil because you didn't represent that name properly. If the name of the Lord is gonna be spoken evil on account of you, 
may it be because you work the righteousness of God and represented him well. Amen. But I want to encourage you to hold fast to the name of Jesus. No matter what pressure comes, and sometimes no matter even, even if you give up, even if you feel like throwing in the towel, even if you feel like giving up on that name, hold fast to that name and walk in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. You were baptized in his name. You walk in his name. You receive the Holy Spirit through his name. You'll be raised through his name and you will walk in glory through his name. So God bless you. Uh, I hope this blessed you and was an encouragement to you. And now uh, we'll put you back in, uh, in the hands of Elder Bonet. God bless you and thank you for having me tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We do thank the Lord for blessing us this evening. Amen. What a wonderful lesson. Amen. By uh, praise the Lord, Elder Dokes, on the topic of what is it about that name? And, uh, and as you were uh, peeling back the layers, you know, um, I, I took a bunch of notes myself and you really got me thinking. Uh, uh, you know, how prevalent this, this subject is, it's, um, you know, um, and, you know, I'm reminded about how the Lord is able to take the most simplest things to confound the wise. And, you know, you would think, you know, if you're looking at things from man's perspective, that man would think that God will come with him, with, against them with an army to overtake them, or, you know, a uh, big pomp and circumstance to overtake them but he, uh, he chose to overtake them with a name. And uh, that name, as you had mentioned in the beginning, praise the Lord, uh, has such weight and authority that, you know, every knee has to bow to it. You know, uh, he's placed such an anointing on the name. And, you know, uh, uh, even um, uh, Paul uh, praised the Lord when he was in Philippi, when he was in prison there, when he said that, look, there's some here in, in, in Caesar's castle here who, who speak of me, you know, uh, for my ill, and there's some who speak of me for my favor, uh, praise the Lord, but nevertheless, uh, Jesus Christ is being preached, you know, that name is being preached, you know, because there's just power in the name, and, you know, uh, someone else had just mentioned this too, about how, uh, you know, uh, there's no need uh, to um, put on a show or pomp and circumstance and, and, and do aerobics and acrobats on the rostrum, you know, and, and put on these, these specialized services to try to compel people because the name of Jesus uh, is, is, is enough. Um, you know, uh, even Jesus himself said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. You know, they recognize who I am. Uh, you know, they recognized, uh, you know, my name. Um, I'm familiar to them, you know, and uh, and so that would then therefore make us to win, to wonder, uh, praise the Lord, how when God designed man uh, and placed him down here, he embedded within us this, uh, his signature, uh, so that, uh, you know, when when the name of Jesus comes about, you know, you have to respond to it, you know, all of yeah, creation has to respond to this, this one majestic name, you know, there's just so much power to the name, and Adam and Eve, when they were hiding in the bushes, when the voice of the Lord came walking through the garden, uh, praise the Lord, hid and was ashamed, you know, um, here the Lord is coming to them in a redemptive fashion, because they needed rede redeeming, and so the Bible and the authors uh, who were inspired by God wisely chose the words that the voice of the Lord came walking through the gardens. This is the word of God. This is Jesus himself, you know, but in his presence, when you're a sinner, you're ashamed, you know, because you're not measuring up to that name. Uh, you know, even Isaiah, when he walks into the temple and sees the Lord high and lifted up, you know, becomes ashamed, you know, of, of his person because you know, he saw the Lord. And so there's just something about, 
you know, uh, you know, the presence of the Lord and, and, and we begin to see ourselves and how we look uh, unto and how we measure up unto that name. Uh, that name is just, just, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, uh, establishment that God has, uh, has centered all of existence around, you know, and he honors that name. And so therefore we need to honor that name, you know, and, um, um, you know, I, I was, I was also thinking, praise the Lord of um, uh, the scripture in Judges 13, 18, where it reads, well, uh, backstory where the, um, the angel of the Lord comes to Samson's parents and, um, you know, uh, they compel him to stay, to have a meal. And, um, um, uh, but before they offer the meal, they ask for his name. So it says here, and the angel of the Lord said unto him, uh, Samson's father, you know, after he asked his name, why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is a secret, you know? Uh, so during that time, that name wasn't fully revealed. Why? Because of everything that's, that Elder Dokes was talking about, that, you know, uh, the name brings healing. The name brings, you know, um, um, you know, it, it, it's, it brings redemption and all of these things. And that was going to come, but not at that time. And um, uh, uh, in Acts 4.12, it says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And so uh, if that name was given back then, then they, they would have the capacity uh, to become saved, you know, but that name had to be a secret until the time revealed. So there's just so much power in the name. And it's such a simple thing. It's, it would seem like it's such a basic thing, but God has taken the basics and made it and given it such power and authority that, uh, praise the Lord, um, uh, uh, all of humanity can be saved by it. The devil's going to be destroyed by it. This name, <laughs> you know. And I love what you had said in the beginning. You had said how the world is doing everything that they can to suppress the name. Uh, you had said how, uh, you know, you can, you know, the enemy is okay with you um, uh, worshiping this, worshiping app, doing this, that, but just don't say the name. <laughs> and I, I, I like that spin on it. I like that uh, that the way that you broke that down. Uh, amen. Because uh, it's very, very true that that name, it just brings change. You know, it changes the environment around it. It, it really scares the devil, makes things move. I'm at work. And if I say that name at work, believe me, I'm not just I'm not kidding. There are those that say, oh, you can't say that here. You know, it, they don't want you to say the name. I don't it It, it does something to people. But that's why we have to keep on pressing. That's why we have to cry aloud in spirit night and just say the name regardless. You know, we don't have to put on a big show. Jesus, that's all you need to say. And things begin to happen. So we do thank you, sir. Amen. For your uh, inspired words. Uh, amen. Uh, that you uh, were given of by the Lord. Uh, amen. And um, uh, before we invite, uh, praise the Lord, Elder Betts, if he has any closing remarks, well, for his closing remarks, I'd like to ask if there's anyone else who has um, a question or a comment for uh, Elder Dokes before we, we turn this over into the hands of Elder Betts in Jesus' name. Is there anyone who has a question or a comment for Elder Dokes? Praise the Lord. Hey, I'm just going to say amen. When you taught a good class, there's not too many questions to be asked because it was thorough in Jesus' name. And God bless you. Came on a little late, but what I heard was good. Yeah. Power in that name. Yeah, Amen. 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 We thank you for that. Amen. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Amen. And Amen. Uh, Amen. I, and, and now I'd like to invite uh, Elder Betts, praise the Lord, uh, for his closing remarks in Jesus' name. We say praise the Lord and good evening to each and every one protocol has been established by El Bonet and we honor our instructor this evening, amen, Elder Stephen Dokes. We thank you, sir, for taking the time out of your schedule to bless us this evening with what the Lord has given you. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, we were together in September. I believe you uh, taught in September for the encouragement series on uh, when you lose your strength to live for God. I believe that was September. 
and uh, here tonight. What it is, what is it about that name? We thank you, sir. Amen. You always come with something that causes us to think and consider our position, our stand, and our walk. And we appreciate that. And when we think about that name, certainly as the scriptures have stated, there is no other name given under heaven. And as Elder Bonet mentioned, when he says it at work, some individuals say, you can't say that here. I tell you, when the name Jesus is like nails on a chalkboard when it comes to the enemy, he does not want us to use it. But I'm so glad that that is a weapon, a major weapon in our arsenal, because there are times we don't have time to get down on our knees and say, our father, which art in heaven. I mean, if we're driving down the highway and, and, and someone crosses the lane and they're coming at us head on, we don't have time to go into all of that. But there's something about the name. It, it can turn the whole situation around immediately. So thank God, amen, for you tonight. Amen. Keep on teaching, sir. We enjoyed you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, the best. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we do thank everybody for joining us. Uh, amen. Uh, I do want to, uh, praise the Lord, invite everyone um, to sign on and subscribe to our, um, our YouTube page. Uh, we have a, a page for Central Jersey Bible Institute uh, on YouTube, and we also have a, uh, a Facebook page. So what we try to do, what we have been doing more recently, thank the Lord, is that we've been recording these uh, these lessons, and we have been uploading them uh, online. I don't, I'm not sure if a lot of you are familiar with that, um, but what I've done is I've placed the link to subscribe in the chat if um, if you're on Zoom. You can see that link there. Um, and what I'll do, you know, for those that are on Zoom, I'll show you really quickly. Uh, when you go to that link, it uh, it, it, it looks like this. Um, really simple enough. You know, you just come here, move this over, and uh, it's going to bring you to the YouTube page. You can see here we got a bunch of our, uh, our encouragement series lessons that we, we started to upload. Um, and we're going to upload Elder Dope's lesson uh, soon, and he'll be up here as well. Uh, praise the Lord. All you have to do is come here and hit this big black button right here that says subscribe, and that's it. So anytime we upload any of, of the lessons, you'll get a text, uh, some type of alert, to let you know that a new lesson has been uploaded. So you can always come back here and you can, you know, uh, refresh yourself from uh, any of the previous lessons, um, such as one with tonight uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, so, uh, again, we want to thank the Lord for blessing us this evening. Uh, join us again next time. Uh, we will uh, meet again on May the 4th. Um, so we won't meet next week. We'll meet the week after that. Okay. Uh, so that's May the 4th. And um, uh, so we, uh, we look forward to seeing you. Uh, praise the Lord, Lord willing, in Jesus' name. And now, without further ado, let us close out. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let every heart pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we love and thank you. We, Lord, thank you for the lesson that you've supplied us with this evening. We thank you for, Lord God, emphasizing how important your name is. Uh, we thank you for showing us and pulling back the layers uh, through your manservant, Lord, that we are able to see that there's power in your name. We know it, Lord God, but we do thank you for uh, the reinforcement of the words to emphasize exactly how potent, how omnipotent, uh, praise the Lord, uh, your name is. It is true power. And darkness is doing everything it can to try to keep your light from uh, opening, uh, revealing themselves in it. So, Lord, we do thank you uh, for the wonderful words that you gave us this evening. Bless every participant on this call, those that were here, those that wanted to be here but couldn't. Bless the whole church. Look upon us. Honor our prayer requests. Have mercy upon us all. Keep us rapture ready and keep us from the enemy. We love and thank you immensely in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Thank you, Elder Dokes. Amen. Well, thank you for having me once again, and I look forward to being with y'all soon. Amen. 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 Love you, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the word. God bless everyone.